Hey guys, it's Chisol back with another video. Last time we reviewed the Gear VR and if you want to check them or any of the other recent videos I've done, look in the description. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. I try to upload two videos every week. Now let's get to the review. Call them dongles or adapters or whatever you want. But if you have any of Apple's latest and greatest laptops, you will need one of these. If you aren't willing to fork out the ludicrous amount of cash Apple is quoting for its offerings, there are quite a few options available online right now. But most of them work with USB 3 and not Thunderbolt 3. And those that are, aren't functioning quite as expected because of the mismatch in the Thunderbolt controller versions. These problems hopefully will iron themselves out as soon as manufacturers bring out accessories like the HyperDoc. But as of 1st January 2017, is the Minix Neo C worth it? As a consumer myself, I looked for a few things before I finalized on getting the Minix Neo C. Both selection was obviously a big factor and I wanted to minimize the number of adapters I was carrying around. The price had to be reasonable for the features it was offering and it had to look good while also being durable. So how did the adapter fare in each of these categories? Take any laptop from the golden age of port diversity and you will find some sort of multimedia out, networking and peripheral interface. So having one of each of these legacy ports is a must if you want your laptop to handle all situations. The Neo C comes in two variants and you can pick up either the HDMI or VGA configuration based upon your needs. There is an Ethernet port if you ever want the reliability of wired connection and it also has USB-C pass-through so you can charge your laptop at the same time. There are two USB-A ports, that's the normal USB port we are all used to and a micro and regular SD card reader. So in terms of port options and reducing dongle number, it looks great right? Yes, but early on some people were facing issues with the MacBook Pro late 2016 edition where the HDMI port wasn't working. After I got my unit, I directly updated to the latest drivers and I didn't face any issues with it. And if you are facing HDMI connectivity issues, use the link in the description to update your drivers and try again. Did it fix the problem? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than this, because the device runs on USB 3.1, its maximum theoretical bandwidth is 10 gigabits per second. So if you have multiple incredibly fast SSDs or have a 4K display connected to the hub with a hard drive, you will see some throttling. My suggestion is to pick up a USB 3 to Thunderbolt 3 cable from Apple along with this so you can use both parallelly. If you aren't using a 4K monitor and are just using mechanical hard drives then you don't need to worry as you will get some really good speeds. The SD card readers are snappy and the Ethernet works well also. As for the price, it costs about $100 and yes though it is pricey, for the same set of ports you would be spending more on other options. And for me it made sense to buy this one because of the added convenience of carrying just one thing. The build quality is great and is fully metal but because of this the surface can get really hot when you're using this for extensive periods of time. Attached to the body is a non-removable 6 inch cable and this means that the adapter is not flush against the laptop like Sitechi's option. I specifically didn't want something like the Sitechi's because I have a fear that it would eventually damage the port because of the adapter and the attached cable's weight. The new C comes in 3 different colors, silver, grey and gold and at least the space grey version doesn't match Apple's space grey on the actual MacBook Pro. So to recap the top 3 things that I like about the Minix Neo C is the port selection, the build quality and the quick response from the company for updating its drivers. What I don't like is that it's not Thunderbolt 3. This isn't the fault of the company itself because this product was developed for the MacBook and not the MacBook Pro. The temperature control could be better and the color mismatch can be corrected. Overall I'd score it a 70 on 100. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. If you didn't, then you know what to do. For more content like this, please subscribe. You can follow me on social media and if you want to see the previous video that I did, click here.